So I'll just start off by sharing my quick experience on this field. So I started off 10 years back, I started a company using computer vision to solve a problem and then moved into a startup for IoT analytics, then did some work on marketing and customer analytics for Pitney Bowes, worked in EY for forensic data analytics, and then in Deloitte in data science and AI. Currently in in BMP Paribas, my focus is AI and digital risk analytics. And over the course of the entire journey, I have come to uh, believe that uh, th the application of predictive analytics response or is congruent to anticipating outcomes. And when you're anticipating outcomes, an easy way to say, how would you defer predictive analytics that was done in the past to that of modern approaches that incorporate machine learning and deep learning. I see both as a crystal ball, whereby machine learning and deep learning gives you the ability for a smarter crystal ball. And you do so by having a different advanced class of models where the relation between the input and output is not defined by an analyst and it's more defined by data and the model. However, a key aspect is data in the entire context. And from my personal view, where we have been using forecasting, advanced forecasting and predictive analytics in the private capital industry in the past uh, for PE and also uh, in certain applications currently, I have noticed that uh, the question always starts with why? Why do you need predictive analytics? And for FPNA, the why has been uh, couple, have been coupled. As you can see, for you can either justify your budget allocations based on your company performance. You can understand your growth drivers and what has caused increase and decrease of revenues and cost. And you can plan in an agile way for future growth. So those are the outcomes you're trying to achieve. Now the question is, how would you do it? So if you take the aspect of a customer-based uh, business where you are trying to understand which customer segments are profitable and which support long-term growth drivers, then you would try to understand and segment those customer segments and forecast the estimated revenue and you know, cost of customer acquisition for those customer cohorts. Now, that is essentially a way to look into the entire company's customer equity and then create a financial story of the customer. However, among all this, the important aspect is judgment. So I see pre the incorporation of predictive analytics more so machine learning reduces the cost of prediction or facilitates more prediction. However, the value of judgment, and he, as Frances said in a very importantly mentioned in her last, in her presentation that human intelligence, ergo ju judgment becomes much more important. Uh, next slide, please. So how do you go about doing ML-led uh, financial forecasting. Before we start into some of the key tenets of doing so, I would uh, classify between uh, the three categories I see uh, currently forecasting is done. One is model-based, um, uh, heuristics-based. The other one is statistical methods. Uh, they are, uh, as you know, halt winters. There are other technical approaches which has been used over the industry from supply chain to even in finance for a long time. And ML-based approaches, which are more computer science domain uh, focus, where you've got optimization and inductive uh, forecasting approaches. We are trying to optimize towards a, a better prediction. So with all that in context, for ML-based approaches, I have noticed that the focus for FPNA use cases is around breaking down your financial planning activities very intelligently into smaller parts, whereby uh, if you're performing forecasting operations, the designing of the job is so much important than the essentially prediction. So good job design around forecasting is um, very important. Then having a common ma machine learning or data science framework whereby FPNA professionals and data scientists can collaborate and they have a generic and a shared computation platform where they can collaborate and in an agile way, recompute the forecasting and then provide that for budging, budgeting and planning is very useful. And finally, the important aspect is data and the ability to refresh data often uh, as, as and when the context changes, there's drift in the population that you're using in a way that the downstream output, which is the forecasted models, 
are commensurate to the changing condition. And then that takes me to the next slide, please. Some of the best practices, and these best practices are cas do cascade into the area of using machine learning for financial planning. Uh, foremost, ML really enables usage of exogenous variables or external variables. And also another benefit of machine learning for forecasting operative analytics use cases is that it empowers the usage of very weak learners, weak models, but many of those. So you've got knowledge of the crowd. Then if you go to the next point, which is pursuing interpretable machine learning model, ever increasingly, it's not good predictions, but understandable predictions that are becoming important as trust in the models is of very much importance. So if you are performing ML explainability to a good, good degree, the other context is around the uncertainty estimation about your forecasting. And I have seen repeatedly um, predictions will have variability. So there has to be a, a approach to creating upper and lower bounds for forecasted values. And the aim should be to reducing that and having better estimates. And finally, backtesting. Models are good, but they're only better if they have been backtested with real data and continuously changing conditions to understand the reducing and the reduction of the model error rate. And then the component of mutual collaboration and trust, the trust between business users or FPNA professionals, CFOs, even, even, uh, even board, that too of data scientists professionals. Because if there is no analytics translation, then uh, essentially the outputs are lost, uh, are lost. So to translation, the incorporation of that is very important. Finally, empowering data scientists to go to higher order predictive task and improving the predictions, whereby the generic predictions are performed by non by business users. So data scientists deployed in predictive uh, approaches, which require much more technical knowledge. I, I, I'll also touch on, uh, before we go to the next slide, around the importance of a good forecasting system architecture to that of ML models. Uh, machine learning models has to go hand in hand with the platform you're using to essentially do your planning, budget planning and financial planning. If it is not integrated well, there will be essentially a lot of information drop and loss. So the signal is shared well when you've got a very embedded infrastructure whereby there is a seamless transition between both. Next slide, please. So in the past, in advisory capacity, we have, I have um, supported uh, companies from the private capital area, whereby the art of the possible uh, we, we tried to help and support was in essentially creating a human-centered ML system. And when I say human-centered, it's uh, human augmented AI ML capability. And at the basis of that has been uh, with the with the availability of cloud technologies, the availability of cloud platform with financial data warehouse, and that is intelligent. And some of the key pillars of that was an end-to-end -end forecasting and strategic planning uh, platform or the ability to do so with very agile uh, approach. And when I say agile, it's essentially the speed, the speed of finding model outputs and then recalibrating based on data, optimizing to what you need to optimize. Then the requirement is around the scalability. If you're using exogenous variables, you know, you're taking in external data, for instance, weather, or in some cases you're understanding, you know, the GIS locations of uh, your potential customers, you will need a compute performant platform, which is enabling you to do financial analytics. Finally, the importance around metrics, because metrics are the key, metric definition leads to forecasting metrics. And that is a key aspect of financial planning. It will differ. If you are a SaaS business which sells software as a service, your metrics will be around a customer lifetime value, or it could be around customer acquisition costs. It can be on churn, so on and so forth. It will be different for another type of business. So metric definition and forecasting those to understand and correlate with your drivers is an important Part. And then finally, the appropriate UI, the UX, whereby the augmentation of human and the machine is catered well, 
So there is a true synergy between both. And finally, I will just uh, end the uh, talk with predictive analytics as the focus. As you can see, predictive analytics have done well with the other horsemen, such as causal analytics, a good technology platform leads to a more robust way to forecast sales volume, sales pipeline, cost, custom acquisition, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm.